Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix mainframe channel. This is Moshix. All through the 80s and 90s I could not imagine a better editor for my uh, personal computer which of course back then was running MS-DOS uh, than ISPF. I had worked for a bunch of years on uh, on the mainframe on NVS uh, first NVS SP and then NVS XA and um, coming from a home computer of the of the early 80s uh, which was uh, just a, a a very small home computer an 8-bit computer with with a basic and then assembler in it I could not I could have I was amazed how uh, capable the ISPF editor was and that so many people could work on the same computer and I fell in love with the ISPF editor and so I could not imagine all through the 80s and 90s a better editor at the time than the ISPF editor but of course on MS-DOS you had to contend with uh, with um, uh, sub uh, par editors at the time I don't uh, maybe Emacs existed for the Emac for the MS-DOS I at the time was not a aware of VI um, there were hundreds of other ed editors. I remember the, um, the V editor and some other editors, but um, but for me, ISPF was the gold standard. And so when I was at home, I, I of course was looking for a way to have ISPF on my computer. And the interesting thing is that there have been over the last 40, 50 years, maybe um, that I know of, eight or nine different implementations of the ISPF, ISPF editor for DOS and then later even for Linux. Uh, in the early 2000s there was an ISPF for Linux which is somehow lost. I've never found, I had it for a while and then I lost it and then never, um, never could find it again on the internet. But um, I did pay in the late 80s I think or yeah I think probably around 88, 89 I did plunk down about uh, $200 for a copy of this editor here which is called the SPF uh, PC editor as you can see here this is version 4.0 quite prominently displayed and I love this editor a lot because first of all it had the full SPF uh, line commands uh, so it was it was very natural for me to work on it uh, but also because it had the full ISPF uh, panel um, logic and compatibility and ultimately also because this ISPF uh, this SPF editor came with its own Rex interpreter so the amazing thing you could do is you could actually run full ISPF panels uh, in Rex uh, on this machine and then you could take the same application and run it on uh, MVS XA um, well actually no MVS ESA came with Rex uh, on ISPF there as well so um, quite an amazing editor uh, at the time so in this video I'll show you a little bit how to uh, work with this editor and how to obtain it and how to in generally in general how to uh, get uh, great software from the 80s and 90s and run it on your Mac OS or Windows or whatever you are I'm right now running on um, uh, on Windows I'm recording this video on Windows which itself runs on top of Mac OS in a virtual machine and this um, this ISPF editor runs uh, inside MS-DOS but the the, um, the interesting thing here is that this is not a real DOS uh, if I do version um, it says DOS box X version 2022-1226 reported as DOS version 5.0 so obviously because of uh, intellectual property reasons um, they uh, were not using um, the people who released this uh, DOS emulator or PC emulator, I should rather say, because it emulates a full personal computer, uh, have a reverse engineered DOS, um, MS DOS version 5.0. And they, if you look carefully, they don't even say MS DOS because of copyright issues. Um, but it is fully compatible. It runs all the games that I know of and all the, uh, all the uh, development software that I used to use back in those days. Now, um, you can see here also this and I'll show you later on where to obtain all the stuff that I'm going to show in this video but uh, you can even choose what kind of uh, CPU you run I'm running here a 386 with prefetch uh, so it's not going to be too fast uh, you can run all kind of you can set yourself you can increase the speed of the emulation or decrease it and um, as I was just showing I have here the SPF PC um, and if we go here now um, this is the edit panel I have here a PL1 program, the famous Ackerman 
uh, program which I like to use because it tests the handling of uh, running out of stack space uh, for any operating system because this creates such a crazy amount of uh, uh, instances on the on the stack of the address space that sooner or later every operating system uh, every every machine will run out of stack space um, so um, just the PL1 program and we get to PL1 in a second later uh, as well but uh, as you can see here this is the full uh, ISPF implementation again I can go here and say edit uh, I could also go here and say delete um, you can um, you have the full utility panel obviously you don't have the address space allocation because in DOS that doesn't make sense but you have search you have um, even uh, super compare to um, to um, to compare stuff and as I mentioned the most amazing thing is for me is that it has a full dialogue uh, ISPF dialog capability. So there is a sample here, um, a phone application where you can um, have uh, kind of a, an address book, uh, Rolodex, uh, where you have uh, Moshix, oh, Moshix, uh, um, and then uh, so and so. And then we have uh, etc. Um, so this is all written in Rex in ISPF. And in fact, you could take this exact application, move it to MVS uh, ESA, and with very little changes to the Rex, because it's not the exact same Rex uh, um, interpreter, it will work just fine there. So this is the amazing thing about uh, this editor. And uh, obviously now people will say, can I submit jobs from here uh, to be executed by our um, MBS uh, 3.8 on top of the Hercules emulator? Well, the answer is yes and no. You cannot do it directly from here for the simple reason that we are inside an emulated uh, PC. And so um, Hercules would have to run inside this PC somehow um, in parallel so that um, SPF PC could talk to it. Um, and of course, uh, multitasking was not possible with MS-DOS um, 5. The, Microsoft indeed did have a multi-user, multitasking MS-DOS, which they intended to call MS-DOS 4, but they, they, they abandoned it. But you can find it still out there. Uh, but there are ways to get submit a job from SPF PC to, um, to a real MBS uh, 3.8 running on Hercules. Uh, and I and I've done it, I don't have it running right now, but it's actually quite simple. Um, I have a shared directory, I mount a shared directory, let's say on drive G, um, you know, you can do G, and then you can say um, users, Moshix, uh, Herc, something like that, and then you mount this directory, it doesn't exist in this case, so I'm not gonna execute it, because of course it's gonna complain. But um, and then I would and then I could do it so that if I save a job in this particular drive G, um, which is mapped uh, in the underlying operating system as this directory here on Windows, then I have a simple script that's running there. Either you can do it in PowerShell or something. If you, you in Unix, it's even simpler, and checks constantly for new drives, uh, new files arriving in that directory. If a new files arrive, if a new file arrives, then what I did is I check if it's JCL by just checking the first line to see if it looks like JCL. If it does, then I submit it to the uh, reader, to the card reader of, uh, of Hercules, which then goes to MBS. So yes, you can submit with, um, it's not too hard. You can spend uh, uh, half an hour, an hour on a lazy Sunday afternoon doing this on your own. But uh, so this, that's the, um, that's the way to work with SPF PC. And uh, I'll show you at the end of, the, of this video where to obtain it, as I mentioned before. The other thing is that since we have a full uh, personal computer here running MS-DOS, we can run any kind of software that ran on MS-DOS back in those days. So you can see here, I have, um, I have VisiCalc here. Uh, VisiCalc, of course, was the first spreadsheet program um, invented for the Apple II originally, but of course, then later ported to MS-DOS. 
some people say a bit too late port to MS DOS because by then you had MultiPlan from Microsoft, which eventually became Excel. Uh, Computer Associates had something called SuperCalc. Um, they were um, in the late 80s, there were maybe 20, 30 different spreadsheet implementations, but this works just fine. You just do uh, all the stuff that you like to do. Um, and that's one thing. Uh, the other thing that I want to show here is this. So uh, many of you will remember Norton Commander, which of course still exists today on uh, on Unix in the form of Midnight Commander, which looks exactly the same and is, acts exactly the same. So you have these two windows and uh, you can copy files back and forth. And in fact, for a good part of the mid 80s, Norton Commander was my MS-DOS shell. So as soon as I booted my personal computer it would IPL it would uh, boot it would uh, start Norton Commander and I would always be in Norton Commander because you could sort you could uh, remove directories it was much simpler than uh, than remembering all the MS-DOS commands and so you have uh, this works just fine um, then the other thing I want to show is that um, Um, we have also a PL, uh, PLI compiler, uh, as you can see here. We have something called uh, the PLI test. Yeah, so as you can see, we have a compiler that just compiled the program, test program. It is from Digital Research, so uh, next to IBM, I think the second most active um, company in the PLI compiler space was probably digital research, the people who came out with the PDP and the VAX, and uh, they were also quite active on the personal computer as well. They owned CPM, and um, and they also had a bunch of compilers, COBOL, Focal, even um, PLI, and some uh, and some other compilers. And this is a compiler from 1983, version 1.0. Um, it compiles this, the usual stuff that I do. Um, and uh, then of course you have a, a, a linkage editor uh, link here. Um, there's uh, several linkage editors for MS-DOS. I like to use the Microsoft one, it's the most capable one. Um, and then of course you can execute programs. But the real, I think, highlight for today is this thing here. Uh, you may remember from my previous videos that I have a video about the assist assembler for MVS. I show how to install it, how to assemble the assembler, <laughs> and uh, and then how to run uh, the usual uh, nQueen program that uh, finds uh, queens on a chessboard, uh, positions for queens on a chessboard. and. Um, what is not as well known as the assist assembler for the MVS um, educational assembler is that there used to be a version of assist for the PC. And we're looking at it today. Uh, it's called CAS. As you can see here, it's assist slash I. I'm not sure what assist I stood for, maybe for instructional. Um, it was released in 1984 by this company, BDM Software. It's, of course, long gone. But the amazing thing about this assist assembler for, um, for MS-DOS, which, of course, then uh, also not only assembles, but also executes the program. So it's, it's an assembler and, uh, and, a, uh, uh, and, in a way, almost an MVS emulator because you can pass it um, macros and they will assemble just fine and execute also just fine is that uh, Mr. John Ehrman, the father of uh, the high-level assembler for ZOS, still still being used widely today, used to use this env exact environment that we're looking at until 2012 to teach a session at the SHARE mainframe uh, conference that happens twice a year to teach assembler there. And he would pull up this, uh, this assembler from uh, 1984 and uh, and uh, and uh, show um, you know, teach assembler to beginners. Now, uh, the the other amazing thing about this thing is that oh, what did I do? 
is that it, it has its own editor in it, which is WordStar compatible. So the key mappings are compatible to WordStar. And in fact, when I when I invoked this assembler myself, the first thing I did is I, I got into the editor and when I wanted to get out, I just tried control uh, K control X to get out and it worked just uh, immediately. So it has its own editor and then you can um, uh, write your programs as you can see here and then uh, you can also um, uh, co assemble them and then even execute them. Uh, and I have here, I think, uh, type and queen. That's the listing that it generates. And yeah, so you can see here, this is the assembled version. It looks like I have a couple of statements flagged in this version. Um, but, uh, and this is the header for every page, page four. So all this uh, works just fine. Now, um, and so I'll show you also towards the end of the video where to obtain all this stuff. And uh, what else do we have? So we also, I think, have a WordStar 4 I have here. Okay. Uh, if I do WordStar, yeah. In fact, I did edit here a couple of years ago, a full program in Go, um, just for the heck of it. And uh, it's my chat program for the HNet uh, mainframe network. And uh, so, yeah, you can have WordStar, which I'm sure many, many of you worked on uh, back in the 80s or even maybe even 70s, 80s and 90s. And I'm sure that WordStar in one way or another still exists today. Um, I think we also have Word Perfect. Yeah, I also have Word Perfect here, um, and um, and many other utilities. So um, now everything that I've shown you, you can obtain yourself. And uh, oh, maybe we go into Turbo ba Basic. Um, as a last thing. Yeah, so um, I have even Turbo Basic here, so I can do basic program. I also have Turbo C, Turbo Pascal, and uh, Tur Turbo Assembler, and Turbo C++. So if we go here, uh, um, let me see, quit. Uh, I also have, I think, so, uh, and even Turbo C. Yeah, I may even have Turbo Pascal anyway. So, so anyway, so um, now how to obtain and get this all to run. So that's what we're going to look at now. All right, so let's get started with the with the foundational um, parts, which is you need a PC emulator. Um, some people thought maybe you could run this in the prompt of Windows 10 or Windows 11. No, you cannot run uh, EXIF files from the uh, 80s and 90s on uh, on prompt uh, on the Windows 10 prompt. And that those don't work anymore. It's not uh, compatible. Completely different API, so it's not going to run. You need a full uh, PC emulator, and there are really two. Um, out there, I, one I suggest you use, uh, and one I suggest you don't use. So if you just search for DOSBox, which is what we're running here, um, you will first land here. Now this DOSBox uh, is not, um, is, I don't like it for Windows. Um, it has Mac, uh, it, it's hard to resize. Um, you can do it, but uh, it's, it's not a very, polished version um, and has some issues. Whereas the one that I suggest you use is the one we just saw before, which is DOSBox-X. Uh, That's the one I suggest you use. It, it runs fine on Linux, on uh, Mac OS, uh, and, uh, and even on Windows. And I think they even have a version for MS-DOS. <laughs> but uh, and uh, and it runs most um, uh, games that I have thrown at it, if not all. You can even run Windows on top of DOSBox. You can, if you if you get the installables, you can install it on top on top of uh, uh, DOSBox and or Windows 95, 98, 
and it will run just fine. Uh, so you get this, you install it on your operating system, it doesn't matter what it is really. And um, and then what you do is once you start it, it will, uh, you can, um, you need to obtain the software that you want to use in a separate place. And then you mount that directory and you execute it. So uh, the first thing that we I want to show you is um, SPFPC. So the SPF editor that I just showed you at the beginning of this video, you can obtain it from um, my GitHub repository. So it's uh, GitHub slash Moshik slash SPFPC. It's the full um, distribution with the installable um, files and everything. You install it and then you configure it as you want and you put it on your uh, computer and uh, then you invoke it with uh, SPFPC. So uh, very simple, you just make a directory copy, the whole repository in there and you're good to go. Um, so in my case, what I do is once I copy it into, onto my, um, what you see here is I have it all in one, um, all in one directory here and I just copied the same files here um, uh, that you see here. They're all just copied in one directory. And you can see SPFPC, that's the one. Uh, and also some other programs like a linker, an assembler, VisiCalc, uh, I have WordStar. I copied all, as you can see here, the assist assembler. I even have the Donkey Kong game, Norton Commander, the PLI compiler, the Turbo Assembler, WordPerfect, WordStar, Turbo by uh, Pascal, it's all in there. You copy it all into one directory, all the stuff that you want to copy, and uh, then you mount the directory, and I'll show you in a second how to do it. Now, so you get the SPFPC editor, and that's one. Then uh, I always like the Norton Commander, so if you go to WinWorld, winworldpc.com, you can search for any kind of software. They have thousands of different um, software packages out there. that are abandonware by now, just like SPFPC. Um, Norton Commander is also abandonware. They have version going from 1.0 to 5.5. I suggest you take 5.5, which is the last version that runs on MS-DOS, because 2.0 was for Windows. Uh, and then you have um, uh, uh, diskette um, images, either um, 3.5 or 5.5, uh, um, uh, five floppy, five inch floppies, and. Um, and you just download them, open up, and then uh, also put it into the same directory. The other thing is that I wanted to mention is the I have here a, a repository on GitHub called github.com slash mashix slash SPFPC commands, where you have all the commands that you can do on SPFPC. All the line commands um, uh, in the file manager, in the 3.4 file manager, all the edit commands you have also copy and paste by the way uh, exclude um, and all these are the line edit line commands um, which we know which is column shift left right uh, move block move etc etc they're just listed here and then you also have the macro commands um, now uh, some people will say there is an editor um, which is called spf Lite, which runs on top of windows yes and in fact, I have the source code here. It was released into source code a couple of years ago when the two um, developers of it had decided to retire. And I wanted it to be uh, conserved uh, before it gets lost. And so I have it here in this repository, Moshik slash SPF Lite. Um, if you can compile this, it will compile just fine. I also have the compiled version in it, just if you want to use it. Um, and these are, and then I have the SPF Lite commands as well in my uh, GitHub uh, uh, account, so you can go and find that as well. And uh, so those are all the things that you need. So once you put this all into a directory, as I've shown you, um, so this is not the one, one, the one I recommend you use. Don't use DOSBox. Use um, this one here, DOSBox X. Um, the next question is. Uh, how do you make this all work? So I'm going to make my DOS box a little bit bigger now so you can see it fine. Okay, so the way that I do this is that I mount, so when you start DOS box, it's going to be here. 
uh, in fact uh, maybe we just restart DOSBox so that you can see how it looks once you start it so let me restart it so once you start DOSBox dash X uh, that's how, what you get on the screen. Now there's two versions of DOSBox, one compiled with uh, the version one of the SDL C++ library uh, for Windows and one compiled with the SDL2. I've had slightly better results with the first version but uh, maybe that's just my... I have an ancient computer here and an ancient uh, version of Windows 10 um, uh, so maybe you have better results with two. Both work. Um, but anyway, so this you present with this screen and um, you can, of course, uh, you have a help. Uh, you can have true type font, which gets bigger as you expand the, the window, uh, which is great for, of course, for making videos. Um, and, uh, or you can have the OpenGL Pixel Perfect for a much better emulation of the fonts. Um, and uh, the interesting thing is that you can uh, change the emulation speed by uh, uh, pressing F11 plus or uh, F11 minus so if you want to change the execution speed you can do that why is that because some games like Donkey Kong uh, will run you know at full speed of the emulation it's much too fast for Donkey Kong you will it will start Donkey Kong and the bad guys will immediately uh, eat up your character so um, so you can reduce the speed there and you can also, of course, go to full screen mode um, with uh, F11 and F and uh, switch back again with F11 and F. Um, also, you have the configuration tool, which is F11 and C, um, etc. Now, the, the, you have a help uh, command if you, if you want to do that. But how do we now access all the software that we downloaded from, uh, from this websites here, such as uh, um, WinWorld? Where you find, you know, I mean, if you go here, by the way, uh, you will find software for. Um, if you go to DevTool, you'll find uh, Tur uh, Portal and Pascal, Turbo Sounder, which we just looked at, Turbo C, um, Clipper, DGraph, DBFast, uh, Digital Research PL1, which is looked at, Digital Research C. Um, editor assembler for the TI-94, Fortran, uh, there's many different COBOLs by the way, um, IBM 32 PC, um, <laughs> I have a long story to tell you but I use this software extensively, um, it's a long story but I needed to script the 3270 connection to the mainframe at one point uh, for complex reasons and so um, and uh, I convinced uh, the place I was uh, uh, programming at to get this uh, uh, to get this uh, to buy this uh, API from IBM and then I could actually control the 32 session 3270 session connected to the mainframe uh, to do advanced searches so there was an application which was searching for names and uh, and then uh, people were always complaining it was too slow so while they were looking at the result of one uh, search I would in the meantime already uh, schedule to have the next search uh, run in the background and so I needed to control the 3270 session anyway so uh, I, I spent hundreds of hours with this piece of software and I downloaded of course and I use it for some of my stuff um, I love it uh, you have IBM COBOL which actually came from Microsoft IBM COBOL compiler uh, it says here yeah rebranded OEM for Microsoft COBOL IBM DB2 but that's for Windows um, Fortran compiler for DOS, um, Pascal compiler for DOS, which also came from Microsoft, and many others. So, uh, so anyway, you get everything you want to get and put it all in one directory. What happens next? So, what happens next is you have it somewhere in the directory, and so then you say mount C for the C drive, and then you just say I'm on Windows right now. So, depending on where you are. Um, Okay, so I mounted the directory as C drive, and here I have it now. So that's how easy it is. So you obtain it, put it in the directory, and uh, you execute. I mean, there's really just three steps: get DOSBox X, install it, launch DOSBox X, download all the stuff, and then uh, mount the directory and execute. Uh, couldn't be easier. Um, as I said, uh, that's um, 
all there is to it. Um, uh, any, uh, let's see if there is any editor that I, let's see the V, yeah, V edit, yeah, that's the one that I meant. Um, and uh, yeah, you can search for anything you really want to do. You find almost everything. Also games, I'm not so much into games. Um, but games are a good way to test the compatibility. Oh, uh, by the way, here's you also have the Intel uh, development uh, tool uh, tools uh, such as the C compiler, Excel compiler, the Intel PLM compiler, Lattice T on C. I actually learned to program in C on this very compiler here, uh, early 80s. Uh, yeah, uh, June 82. <laughs> I I bought this one. It was crazy expensive. I think it was at the time something like uh, $400, which is like $1,000 in today's money. The Intel Macro Assembler, very good assembler. Uh, Visual Age for Java, you find everything here. Um, just, uh, you have limited to 25 downloads a day, but I don't know if I wanted to download more than 25 things a day because each one of this is a whole world to discover. Uh, so anyway, so once you mapped it, as I, um, you can also do intro mount. And it will give you, uh, uh, it will explain to you how to use the mount command. Now, some uh, of, of this are, uh, of these downloads are in image format. So, uh, DOSBox image mount. If you search for that, uh, you'll find some um, uh, explanation. So, if you have an image file, uh, such as uh, many of these uh, uh, downloads from WinWorld, then you mount it with mount. And you say, oh, sorry, image mount. And then you say the drives, it's a D. And then you point to the directory where the thing is. And then you say T floppy. So, uh, I don't know, put it uh, C uh, DB2 image, let's say. And then you say T floppy. If it's a floppy image, but usually it is. And, um, and then it will mount the floppy image as a drive. So, uh, it's important that you um get the, the dash t floppy um that's the, that's the way to mount it and then it mounts just fine usually when you see something that's in the image format it means it's the original distribution floppies and you need to install it so spf pc uh the way i uh, bought it uh was in uh, in install you know you had to go and install it so uh, then you mount the image format the floppy and uh and work with it this way Anyway, so all this works. Um, it's a it's a fun world to explore. As we said, it's not limited only to uh, DOS, but um, also to mainframe stuff. Now, there's one last thing I wanted to show you, uh, which is uh, there is also a PC370 original diskette. So there's a book that you can find out there. It's crazy expensive. I have actually by mistake two of those books where you have an assembler for um, for uh, PC as well better one than the assist one because you can uh, actually uh, write applications that will run fully on the on the, on MS-DOS so um, let me see what we have here uh, full yeah uh, demo yeah let's see so you see here uh, these are uh, written by the books by Don Higgins and uh, the book used to include a diskette uh, floppy with a with the PC 370 uh, environment on it so where you could assemble it and then run on the on the MS DOS computer and I have it here in my uh, github.com slash moshik slash MVS in this uh, PC370 subdirectory. So now you have several environments uh, to which uh, to edit and assemble and execute uh, or compile and execute programs um, and still have your favorite um, SPF PC environment. So uh, that's the short video for today, um, just for fun, just because it's weekend. And I hope you will enjoy uh, working with uh, all these programs and for any questions please uh, post comments below this video uh, if you like my channel and I hope you do please uh, do not forget to subscribe 
and I wish you a great weekend. Thank you, goodbye.